Hello, sweet friends, and welcome back to our kitchen. First of all, I just wanna say the biggest thank you for spending this past year with us and cooking alongside of us. I hope these recipes have blessed you and your family and you have tried them and loved them as much as we have. And so I thought, you know, I wanna do like a best of video, our top three recipes of 2023. And at first I was thinking, this is gonna be very hard to narrow down. But then as I started like going back and thinking about it, I was like, nope, I knew exactly what three recipes to pick because these are the ones that stand out to us that we make over and over again and that were just like unbeatable and if you have not already tried these trust me you have got to make them they are delicious so without further ado let's go ahead and get started on this first one now friends i don't even think you are ready for this recipe i can't even tell you how many of y'all tagged me in this recipe and y'all are like this is right for alley you have to make it and let me tell you as soon as i saw it i was like y'all are right i have to make this because you guys know how much I love Mississippi chicken, Mississippi pot roast, Mississippi chicken noodle soup, Mississippi anything. It is my favorite flavor combo. My mouth is already watering. We are going to make a Mississippi chicken and potato cheesy skillet. Yes, you heard that right. I cannot wait. And it's supposed to be done in less than 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. The first things first, I just went ahead and kind of washed off all of these little baby gold potatoes. And we're gonna cut these up into like bite sized pieces. I know they're already very small, but like basically little cubes. If you have a like russet potato, you can also just kind of peel that and then cut it into cubes. Whichever potato you have or you prefer, use that one. And then we're gonna season these up and actually cook them in the air fryer. totally just spilled like all my potatoes so thankfully I had extra to cut but to season these I'm just gonna use some of the blend so salt pepper and garlic and then a little bit of smoked paprika okay so now these are just going into the air fryer we're gonna cook them at 400 degrees for like 15 to 20 minutes why I just washed this out but I did but you don't have to wash out your bowl you can just use the same one that the potatoes were in and then you're just going to take your chicken breast and we're going to also cut it up into bite-sized pieces as well and toss it in our bowl I'm sure there's like an easier way to do this but he always makes fun of me for how I cut up chicken but I just hold it with a fork and kind of <laughs> go to town with no rhyme or reason I don't know this is just what I do like I'm basically just hacking away at this. I need to just get like a knife out and cut it because honestly that would probably be easier. Okay, so now that I've got our chicken cut up into bite-sized pieces, you're gonna use half a pack of au jus gravy and then one tablespoon of ranch seasoning. And we'll get that all stirred together and then we're gonna get it to our skillet with a little bit of butter in there and cook it until it's completely done. So potatoes are done and they look awesome. I'm just gonna leave them in here and kind of like stay warm while our chicken finishes cooking. But it smells so good. It smells just like Mississippi chicken. Okay, so now that our chicken is cooked all the way through, by the way, I tasted it, it's amazing. Go ahead and add your potatoes right into your skillet. Stir those in. I know, like I said last night, y'all do not like when I say things are my favorite, but I cannot tell you how excited I am to eat this. Like, I've just been over here cheesing the whole time that I'm, like, making this because it is just, like, so up my alley. It's going to be a favorite, let me just tell you, okay? So now to our potatoes and our chicken, we're going to add in however many sliced pepperoncinis that you want and then also top this with mozzarella cheese. It's totally okay if some of that cheese gets in there. Oh yeah. Okay, looking good? Mm -hmm. A few more? Now because my caraway pan can go in the oven up to like 550 degrees, I'm gonna pop this in the oven at like 350, 375, just until that cheese gets like super nice and melted. And then this is gonna be done so easy. <gasps> oh my goodness. 
You know what I was just thinking? What? This is like a Mississippi uh, chicken skillet hash. Yeah, it kind of is. It has the potatoes and cheese. Monkey. This is every single thing that I love in one. I will say, I think I'm going to like this quite a bit because it has the air fryer potatoes. Yes. Which oh. I, I am a fan of. Oh, yes. <laughs> I am on pins and needles. Okay, pins and needles. Oh, that's a, this is a good looking plate. I, right I'm just going to take this. Like, I just want a fork and this. I just told Bunky that I wanted to go first. This is my favorite. And he said, uh -uh, I'm going first. <laughs> first dibs on this one. Oh, look at that. Oh, look how it's a nice, like, caramelization. Oh, it's just unbelievable. The, the potato is suspended to the cheese. I like that the chicken's not, sh um, you know how normally it's kind of like shredded-ish? Uh-huh, in the crock pot. I like it in the, the chunkier fashion. I might actually like this better than like in the crock pot. I think I do too. It has like better texture. Yeah, and it's a whole full meal. Yeah. Like you don't have to make anything else, like this is it. Mm -mm. And y'all, it took less than 30 minutes. Plus, this is kind of like a um, inexpensive meal. Like, I would say this is like a good budget-friendly 30-minute go-to recipe. Mm. Okay, let me try this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna just keep going. You know what I was thinking, too? What? That really, like, hits on what I think of the, like, concept of, like, a real true skillet-type meal. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. My eyes are watering. I think it's because I'm like literally about to shed a tear. This is so good. I like it better than crock pot Mississippi chicken. For sure. And that is, you guys know, one of my top five favorite foods in the entire world. I'm telling you, it's better than that. Oh my gosh. Same flavor. Tastes just as good, but better. Better consistency. I love what you're saying about the chicken. Like, I like that it's in chunks and it got good, like, caramelization on there. Mm hmm. The potato, the cheese. That's the game changer, is that style of potato, like, with it. That was, it's so good. Okay. This is my favorite. This is my favorite. That's I don't care what y'all say, this is my favorite. That's number one. Wow. I, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Okay, before we get into this next recipe, it is, like, that time of year where we are eating all of the yummy things and just indulging and having treats and desserts all the time, and... It's just like this incredible food is constantly around us, which I for one love, but also I'm kind of ready in the new year to get myself back in check and to get my gut in check. And if you are like me, the best way I know to do this is by taking my Seed DS01 Daily Symbiotic. You guys know we've been taking this for months and months and we love it. And so if this is like a priority for your new year's resolutions, I feel like now is the perfect time for you guys to start taking it as well. So Seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic is a plant-based prebiotic in a 24 hour strain probiotic and by now you'll know it's something Buck and I both take every day and we just love how it makes us feel. We've learned a lot about gut health and how it's connected to everything and it's just so super important. Taking our DS01 daily is part of our routine and not to be TMI but it's really helped our digestive health and regularity also get into a routine. If you're going to pick one new healthy habit for the new year, DS01 is made for whole body health supporting your gut, skin, and heart health. We love knowing how much research, science, and efficacy that seed puts into every detail and ingredient. There is no preservatives, no binders. It's soy-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, and so much more. You get a refillable glass jar that it comes with, and then each month you get a new 30-day supply. I am so excited for you guys to try seed, and if you start now, you can have a more regular 2024, if you know what I mean. So click my link below and use my code JESSICA25 to get 25% off your first month supply of seed's DS01 Daily Symbiotic plus free shipping. Now, not that we can even think about what we're having for dinner tonight, but I do need to go ahead and get it kind of prepped because we will need to put it in the refrigerator for like a couple of hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and get our like marinade so we can get this steak in there. We're gonna make steak fingers and you guys know how much I love chicken fingers. That's my number one favorite food in the entire world. So we're gonna see how steak fingers hold up to chicken fingers. Mm -hmm. But based it's off- a good experiment. Yeah. And based off the recipe and like the reel that I watched, I feel like they're gonna be superb <laughs> because I also love steak and we're gonna eat it with like a buttermilk ranch 
Ooh, y'all, so good. So anyways, I went to the grocery store. I got a boneless top sirloin steak and Bunky is just gonna take this and cut it into like little strips to obviously make like strip the, fingers, the, finger. the fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him to go ahead and cut that and then we'll get our marinade made and get this in there. Looking good, looking good. Yeah, you don't want them to be too thick. You kind of want them to be like, what, quarter to half inch? Yeah, cause they have to uh, like cook quickly enough before your breading would burn, you know? Right. Well, that's how we're gonna put them in the freezer for a little bit too. Ah, yeah. So that they can cook for a little bit longer. I can't remember what a good looking steak that is. Like Publix, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start on our marinade. I just added one egg and then I'm gonna pour in some buttermilk. I like the buttermilk as what, you know. Tenderizes. Tenderizes, gives it that good flavor. This mm. stuff is thick. It's thick. <laughs> I actually made some buttermilk ranch with it yesterday that we're gonna dip these in, and that is some of the best ranch ever. Okay. You wanna hear a story? Sure, tell us. So, my mom, that y'all saw recently, yeah, she used to like drink buttermilk uh -uh. straight. Mama does the same thing. Mama will drink buttermilk. Yeah. Mm. No, thank you. And I remember when I was little, I would always want to try it, but then I would, you know, chicken out. No, I would taste it. Oh, you did. Like, mm -mm. Yeah. No. Okay, if y'all drink buttermilk by itself, yeah, let us know. Tell us in the comments. And now you're just gonna add in like your favorite steak seasoning. So of course I'm gonna add in some of the blend in here. And then y'all know we love this red garlic as well. And I'm only gonna put a teeny tiny bit of this just to give it the smallest little bit of heat in there. Mm -hmm. It's always a surprise seeing what, uh, what I'm gonna pick. <laughs> yeah. Surprise pepper parmesan's not going in there. I was going to, but I was like, you know, I think a little bit of heat will be nice. We'll, we'll mix the cheese on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I feel like that's good. And then lastly, we're just gonna add some flour in here, which is what's gonna give us that like amazing crust and crunch mm. on our fingers. How much flour are we going in with? Well, the recipe says half a cup, but I also didn't use the exact measurements of buttermilk, so, yeah. you know, I'm just eyeballing it. What do you think, a little more? That's, no, I'd say you, you got pretty, pretty close. You know, well, I she's half a cup. You know, I don't know how to use measuring cups or anything, but <laughs> that was that looks pretty close to half a cup to me. That actually just kind of looks like gravy. Yeah, it does. That's what I was thinking. That's whenever you showed this to me. Uh-huh. This is like... Looks like steak and gravy. It's like uh, Salisbury steak. Yes. Or country fried steak. But, That's exactly. But on an individual and fun basis. Yes, agreed. I always add our steak right into this marinade and Bunky insists on using his hands. We're going to drop it in and smoosh it around. Smoosh it around. And then after we get this like super coated, we're going to pop a lid on this dish and put it in the fridge for a couple hours. See, this is like required, hand required in there. Okay. Because you got to get all these little separations, make sure everybody's got a little love on it. <laughs> So you know how when we were making the Rad Dad summer salad? <laughs> oh my gosh, the other yes, day, yes. And I had the uh, genius idea of, you know, freezing your butter for a little bit and then chopping it with that device. Yeah. Well, as we sit here and we're preparing these steak fingers, uh -huh. I just happened to put two and two together and noticed that our ingredients already on the counter here Butter, milk, Ooh. biscuits. Oh, then you know what? Sounds I think like you I, have to make me some biscuits. Sounds like I might be making buttermilk biscuits. Y'all know Bunky is <laughs> our biscuit maker because he makes some good biscuits. I think it's how much butter you put in them. <laughs> it took me like five minutes to figure out what Bunky was saying. He goes, woo! Yep. I was like, I don't get it, B. And he's like, the Pillsbury Doughboy. I was like, oh. He's like the biscuit man. Now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I had a total blog you know, moment. Gr Grands Junior, all yeah. those good stuffs. Yeah. Okay, Bunky, I got you. Yeah. Okay, so our steak has been marinating all day. I feel like I'm just now actually getting hungry enough to like want to have this for dinner. Actually, I have been thinking about it all day long, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm just not hungry enough I can eat it. Anyway, I am going to make us our batter and it's really simple. It's just gonna be flour with salt, pepper, and garlic. So I'm just gonna obviously use the blend and then we're gonna get our steak fries, steak fingers, mm -hmm. <laughs> steak fingers um, in here. 
shake off any excess and then lay them on this tray and they're gonna go in the freezer for about an hour then we're gonna fry them so a little bit of prep work but I feel like well worth it you know They are already looking so good. And by the way, I did use some parchment paper since we are gonna put these in the freezer just to make sure, you know, like nothing sticks, everything's good. So we're gonna pop these in the freezer one hour, then it'll be time to cook. Oh boy. I can't wait. Yes. It is time. <laughs> How'd you know I was literally gonna say no, that? No, you are not. These things have set up very nicely. We're looking good. We got our oil going. Let's, uh, let's test do, it out let's for do us. the old test here. We're not quite there Not yet. quite there. Okay, I think it is time. Very gently drop these in. We're just gonna fry them until they are like golden brown and they should be cooked perfect on the inside. Isn't it always just like so awesome seeing something dropped in oil? Yes. I feel like no one could be more excited for that than I am. Like steak fingers. I know. Wow. Since these just came out and they're still like nice and hot and I have some flaky sea salt, I'm gonna put just a pinch of like, you guys know. You gotta salt it when it's warm. Yeah, the flaky sea salt just right on top. Just building the flavor layers. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, round two. <laughs> I think we have like two or three more batches over there. You know that we're happy when we're always like making that sound. Yeah, when we're singing, we're happy bunkies. <laughs> also, you know, we never make like cube steak, although I feel like my mom made it a lot growing up. Did your mom? I did, we had it. We always had not, it. Not like too, too often, but we had it way more regularly than we ever Me, you do? Yeah. We never make we, it. We never make it, so it's actually one of those things that I get at Cracker Barrel. Yeah, that's true. Occasion, you know? But this like kind of reminds me of it a little bit, so I'm just like, so excited to have something different. You know where I got some too? Where? Remember when we went to, um, was it the old mill when we were in Pigeon? Yes, like, that is uh, Like the last year or something? Yeah, that was yeah. really good there too. Mm -hmm. Bunky is not having it with me because <laughs> I was like, I'm tasting this first too. I can't help it. If it's like my favorite things, you know, I have to go first. Mm. I always let you have your favorite things and I try and cook recipes that you love, but when it comes to me. This is, this one I can give to you. Okay, y'all, it just got like the perfect batter. Like when I go to a restaurant and I wanna like get chicken tenders, this is the kind of like batter I am looking for. That's my favorite. Okay, I'm gonna dip it in my buttermilk ranch. Did I hear some crunch? I'm hearing some crunch. Oh my God, I might cry. The batter has so much flavor. There's like such a crunch and a crust to the outside. The steak is so tender. It is so tender. There is so much flavor. I never knew that dipping steak in ranch could be so good, okay? You didn't know. <laughs> but it's like a whole nother level. I'm gonna be really honest with y'all. I would take these over any chicken tenders all day long. There's no way. Yes, I promise well, you. Well, I'm about to fall on the floor whenever I bite <laughs> one of these because it's you gonna are. be that good. Chicken tenders are my favorite food in the whole wide world and I'm telling you right now, I would take this over chicken tenders every day, all day. You're gonna lose your mind. You gotta do the ranch. You stop it. Tell me I'm wrong. You're not, you're right. I see what all the fuss is about. The batter has so much flavor, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, yeah. But I think what really makes the difference here is that refrigeration step. I think so too, because it really tenderizes the meat. Oh my goodness. And you know, this isn't even like a super expensive uh, cut of meat, you know? No, if you go to a restaurant, shoot, five chicken tenders are $16. <laughs> we just where? got like 25 chicken tenders. Where are you eating? <laughs> Would you do chicken fingers or those? I'd rather have this. For Me sure, too. For sure. It seems like it's a lot of work, but it's really not. It's not. It does take a while as far as, you know, you, you prep it, you gotta let it sit in the fridge for a little while. But by the time you pick the kids up from school, do this. <laughs> Y'all, there is not a lot of things that I would choose to eat over this. 
I am not kidding when I tell you it is one of my very favorite things we have ever made. One of my very favorite things I have ever eaten. Like this is one on the rotation once a month I have to have this. All right, it is finally time to make some dinner. We're kind of eating late tonight, but we did have chips and queso like at 1.30, so we're really just now getting hungry. Mm -hmm. I kept asking Monkey, do you want to cook yet? And he's like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> but we're going to make a really easy dinner. It's like a Borison creamy chicken and then we're gonna make some orzo to go with it and y'all know we've kind of like loved cooking with boris and we've made a lot of recipes with it and it's just an easy way to make lots of things and gives it like all that flavor yeah it's so good so bunny's down here kind of like trimming our chicken you want to use thinner chicken breasts because we are going to like pan cook them um so bunny's like he wasn't gonna cut them in half but they're already kind of thin so he's kind of just pounding out those thicker spots. Yeah, I think I, uh, this one was thin enough already to kind of just pound out. I think I'm still gonna have to cut this one in half. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get our pan on and get some avocado oil in here. And then the recipe that I'm going off of didn't say to use flour, <laughs> but because I'm gonna like, you know, pan, fry, cook, sear, whatever you wanna say, the chicken, I want a little bit of flour just to have like a better crust on there. So I'm gonna season this up with some of the blend, so salt, pepper, and garlic. If you don't want to use flour, just salt, pepper, and garlic your chicken. But I recommend the flour action. I do too. And then since we're using like a garlic herb borson, I'm going to put just a tiny bit of this Kinder's in my flour as well. Funky requested like put a little bit of butter <laughs> with our oil. So I put a little bit of that in there. And then since you already have chicken hands, I want to season the chicken just a little bit with the blend before we do the... Um, Flour. Direct contact. Yeah, with just the seasoning. Make Love sure it. we have some good flavor on there. Okay, you flip it. I was telling Bucky we ended up with about 2.5 chicken fillets. <laughs> <laughs> we were at Sam's Club last time. I told you like we didn't eat any more of the blend, but we are about out, so I'm glad that we have a backup ready to go. Yeah, we will never be blendless bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so flour both sides, and then pop it into your pan. Give it a nice little coatage. Get all those like crevices. Mm hmm. Oh, look at that, mom. That's a good floured piece of chicken. I think we're only gonna have room to cook like two at a time, though. Yeah, I might go with the half size one. Now we've got our water boiling back there, so I'm gonna actually salt it. I know y'all all laugh at me because I put salt in my pepper shaker, but I do. <laughs> So I'm gonna salt this and then we will add our orzo. And remember, this is like only the second or third time we cooked with orzo, but I'm telling you, we really love it. If we took that little piece out, we're gonna let this big guy, he's like a honker. <laughs> we're gonna let him cook for a few more minutes and then I feel like my orzo is pretty much done. I probably should have waited a few minutes to cook that, but it'll be fine. Will you um, grab that so we can drain it? I feel like I followed the instructions, but now that I read it back, I'm just not so sure that I did. <laughs> but I think it'll be fine. What's new, Bob? What's new? I know. And I was like, well, this isn't going to fit in a colander, like our you know, big one. Yeah. But it'll fit in this one. Make sure you have a firm grip. I got a firm grip. Uh-oh. Oh, it fit perfect. Orzo! Okay, I'm gonna let this drain for a second and put it back in there, and then I'm just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> this is what multitasking will do. Ejected. Look at all this. It's like so much steam. Oh. And trust me, y'all, it's not that cold in our house. And the chicken's probably back there burning. Okay, hang on. Okay, now like I was saying, <laughs> I'm just gonna add this back to our pot, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of lemon juice and like some salt and pepper in here. Yo, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the light from our stove looks so blue on camera tonight, so I'm sorry if it is. Mm. Um, I'm gonna add just a little pinch of salt in here, and then some pepper, and then y'all know we love this like garlic olive oil, so to give it a little bit of flavor, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of this so that it doesn't like stick together while we finish cooking the rest of this recipe. Oh my goodness, Bonnie. It's gonna be good, isn't it? You just, you just spoke to my heart. <laughs> And then I would do just like a little squeeze of lemon to kind of like brighten it up. Because ultimately we're going to end up putting like this chicken and creamy sauce kind of like over top of this. So it doesn't need too much 
sauciness already. Sauciness is one of your favorite words. You always tell me sauciness. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're so sassy. So sassy. Hey, look, watch this. You can squeeze it over top oh, of that. Oh, that is perfect. Since okay. we already used it. Little lemon. Mom, dude, that's smart. Thank you. You want to take a bite you of this? You know, those lemon seeds will disguise in there as orzo if you're not careful. That's true, then you'll break your tooth. Yep. You want to try it? You remember when you were doing that thing? What were you doing? You made something one time where it was like, was it just rice? It was rice and you put feta cheese in it. Oh, it was good. What were we eating that with? Just chicken. No, I think I made like a disassembled pasta salad that I love and it was the artichoke chicken and feta. Is that good? Mm-hmm. Should we put a little feta in there? How come that it by itself be so good? I know. Well, the Borison's gonna have that cheesy element to it. Oh my gosh. That in itself, though, is delicious. Let me try it. Bon view. I know. The garlic olive oil. Mm -hmm. It is. And the lemon makes it so bright. It is mind boggling how tasty that is. Oh, like, that's good. Like, seriously. Oh yeah. my, look at that. That's Ooh, a little treasure. That's a treasure. You wanna eat that? I am. Oh my lord, monkey. That's so good. I'm gonna leave this because I think that I can get it up and. It'll just be more flavor. Okay, I'm adding just a little bit more oil because I have some not so finely <laughs> onions that I sliced up. You can chop yours as fine as you want to. Um, I'm gonna add these and we're gonna sweat them out. I just hope you guys are so proud of how far I've come with the whole onion thing. Next thing you know, I'm gonna be complaining about it someday. When no, you, well, I'm not you, eating them. When you start eating onions, I'm gonna be the one at the disadvantage. Well, you know, Bunky told me that most of America eats onions, so I gotta start making some recipes with onions in them. So here we are. <laughs> we turned the heat off and now they're like not doing anything. Okay, let me let these heat up. So now our onions have sweat out till they're like nice and tender. And like I said, we're gonna use the Borson garlic and fine herbs. And we're just gonna add this entire thing to our pan with about, is it three fourths cup? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. three-fourths cup of like chicken broth and mix it until this is just like creamy and smooth. This is so fun to open. I know. They're always fun. It's like, uh, reminds me of opening a Reese cup. <laughs> it really is. So just the whole thing. Yep. Straight in. in there. Yep. And then if you want to pour in our can't leave that. chicken broth. I mean, I could like just pour that over pasta. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I was gonna say a second ago, I almost wanna just take the orzo once that is all nice and smooth and come together. Yeah. Just dump it back in there. This took all of like 90 seconds to melt down and get creamy. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna let this just kind of like come together for a few minutes and let this almost reduce down a little bit. And then we're gonna add our chicken back in here. I just took a bite of this. I'm, I'm gonna let Bunky tell you, but wow. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And then with the orzo, did you get a bite with onion? Mm -mm. See, I can't even imagine it with onion. Like that's gonna be even better, you know, if you this like them. This is fantastic. It is. Absolutely fantastic. Like such a simple dinner. This was the easiest dinner to put together. And I cannot even begin to explain to you the flavors, the creaminess, the brightness from the orzo, all of it. That boris and cheese sauce stuff just transforms. It does. Literally transforms. And I like it with the orzo because it it's, it's just something about the, the little bits, you know? Yeah. Borson is like a secret weapon to cooking. The lemon juice, though. It brightens that, it. That is nice. 
I think the lemon juice is great because the borson's like kind of um, rich and savory, and so the lemon mm -hmm. juice like cuts it a little. Mm -hmm. This is seriously up there with some of my favorite chicken dishes we've ever made. Wow, I'm telling y'all, it's delicious. Like, you're gonna wanna make this one. Okay, so there you have it, our top three recipes of 2023. If you have not made them, you have got to. I'll have all the recipes linked down below for you. Also, don't forget to check out Seed. I'll have all the information down below. Such a great way to start off your new year, plus you get 25% off and free shipping. I hope you have a very happy new year. We love you. Thank you for hanging out with us in the kitchen always. I cannot wait to make more delicious food in 2024. If you have not joined our family already, be sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. Y'all give this one a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Bye y'all.